Hey, Tim, so are you doing some last-minute shopping before the weekend? Well, actually, I'm looking for supplies to put together 72-hour kits for each member of my a family. 72-hour kit? What's that? Basically, a 72-hour kit contains emergency supplies. You would need to sustain yourself for three days in case of emergency, like an earthquake. An earthquake? We haven't had an earthquake in years. Well, you never know. You have to be prepared. Hey, if earthquakes don't get you, it could be a flood. Hurricane, snowstorm, power outage, fire, alien attack. Alien attack? Well, you never know. Think of any situation in which you might find yourself without the basic necessities of life, including shelter, food, water, for over a period of time. Um, so what are you keeping a 42-hour, um, I mean, 72-hour kit? Well, you should have enough food and water to last you three days. And you might want to pack a basic water filter or water purification tablets in case your only water source turns out to be a murky pool of bug-infested water. Ugh. Hey, sometimes you don't have a choice. And as for food, you should keep it simple. Food that requires no preparation and that doesn't spoil. And no canned goods because they are often too heavy and bulky. Okay, that makes sense. And unless you have a can opener or the can has a pull tab lid... You'll have to use a rock or something to open them. Uh, instant mashed green beans. Yeah, and oh, energy bars, beef jerky, and a mix of nuts, raisins, and chocolate are possibilities. Well, food might be nasty, but I guess you could survive. Barely. Well, the food doesn't have to taste bad. Just select things that are easy to prepare. And you might want to include some basic comfort foods, like a couple of candy bars. Then you have to decide on the type of shelter you might need. A hotel sounds nice. Yeah, but that's really not an option. The reality is that you might have to evacuate to a shelter, possibly with hundreds or thousands of other people. That doesn't sound very fun. Everyone packed together like sardines in a can, unsanitary conditions... Disease? Ah, now you're sounding paranoid. But if a shelter isn't available, you might be completely on your own. So I always pack an emergency sleeping bag or a small, lightweight tent in the event I have to survive on the street or in a park. Oh, wow. And among other things, you should pack a flashlight, portable radio, extra batteries, a small first aid kit, personal items like a toothbrush or toothpaste. Having a change of clothing is also important. What about money? I have a credit card. Right, like that's going to help you when the power is out. You'd better be prepared with coins and cash, and having small bills is a must. So what do you do to communicate with other family members in case you get separated? Oh, in that case, I always pack two-way radios to communicate with the group. You can never depend on cell phones. Okay. <laughs> Plus, you should decide on a meeting point in case your family gets separated. Well, that sounds like a detailed plan, definitely. Oh, that's not all. You never know what weather conditions you might encounter. So, packing a rain poncho, a jacket, and something to start a fire with could be very useful. Like matches? Matches? You drop those in a puddle of water and you're toast. You need to pack at least three forms of fire starter. A magnifying glass, a high-quality lighter, and waterproof matches. Well, I never thought about those either. So what do you do if you have small kids? Yeah. They'd probably go stir-crazy under such conditions. You're exactly right. So a little extra preparation for them is needed. If you have to evacuate to a shelter to wait out a disaster, kids soon will be bored out of their minds. So you have to pack small card games, paper, or something like pencils and crayons to draw with. You know, preparing a 72-hour kit makes perfect sense. Yeah, but most people think about it after it is too late.